Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am Flake. I'm joined by Rick from BCW. It is time to bring you our very first showdown here at the Instant Speed Network, I guess we can call it. It is the finals as they occurred at Harry Tarantula uh, for ProQuest just recently this past weekend. So uh, this is one hell of a matchup. I was in that field. I got decimated in the top eight, but dear goodness me, it was quite a field. Rick, how are you, man? Nice to see you. I'm doing wonderful. Uh, thank you so much for having me on and valuing my opinion in this. Uh, I do know a little bit about one of the decks we're going to see because it's what I chose to play in my pro quest as well. So super excited to see how this shakes down. I know the results are known. However, they are not known by me. I have a vague guess as to who wins because I've played this matchup before, believe it or not. But I don't, I, I haven't watched anything. So super excited. Hey, it's always good to keep it sort of uh, uh, all hush-hush, especially for the casting team, because I was there, so I know the result. I will not give that away. I was there recording, so uh, for you to just witness this in person is going to be great. Let's go through the deck list again. The two players that are going to be doing battle is Derek Chu and Isaac Krut, and these are names that you might recognize, especially Isaac. He's a major, major name out there in the Flesh and Blood world as well as the MTG world, and here he is in a pro quest looking for that glory we're gonna start however with Derek's list it is viscerai rune blood and i think that in all honesty when it comes down to it uh, I've, I've kind of coined it as the triangle of doom you've got starvo viscerai and prism kind of lurking about here but why don't you walk us through viscerai's list all right well first off it, the uh, weapons and equipment package is pretty much cut and paste standard for most any uh viscerai list out there right now there's nothing really to glean uh, from this package. And what I mean by that is in the past, when you would see like the Skeletta, you would know that, oh, they're gonna have an OTK plan. But now that's just a good two block, one block with maybe a two block and an upside for an aggro package. And you're not really gonna know until you get in and start seeing some key cards. Uh, the decks for Viscerai are now all slanted more aggressive than they were previously because of some of the new cards out of Everfest, like Revel and Runeblood, which is an amazingly good card. And sometimes you don't see that when you set up for OTK. Um, when we scroll down to the list, you're going to see 43 uh, zero pitch or red pitch cards. This is typical on both the semi OTK or OTK build plus the aggro build. Uh, what I'm noticing when I just briefly look at this list is that there are three yellow read the runes in here. Now, three yellow read the runes, three red read the runes, and three of the new rune blood incantations lets me know that this deck has a setup for OTK. That's kind of what you're uh, going to view as your identifying mark as to whether or not this is pure aggro or OTK. We see 21 blues, the big shout out, and this one is gonna be to Shrill of Skull Form. That is a phenomenal blue out of Everfest. Uh, I believe it's in every Viscerai list. It comes in, cost of two, comes in for five essentially, because if you've played a non-attack action, you play that, it makes the rune chant. It's always checking to see if an aura has been made to get the plus three. So super, super good blue, pitches for three, blocks for three. Uh, looking at this list, again, it, this is the aggro slanted with OTK uh, package viscerai list yeah some of the standard procedure here like you mentioned the usual suspects as well as some new faces to what runeblade can do cards like swarming gloomvale for example is a hot commodity right now and i would be i would suspect that a lot of players out there who want uh you know who who are, are in these tournaments there would likely be more viscerize if there were more swarming gloom veils and and uh and and those those brand new cards from everfest that were available but sometimes they just get bought out and it's just tough luck uh you know sadly goodbye but in this case cards like sonata arconics what we've seen as a rune blood uh or, sorry a rune uh, a rune blade staple as well as a lot of these other cards such as i mean enlightened strike a lot of people are talking about enlightened strike just not being as good as it once was but here it is and like you mentioned in an aggressive package it is a great option all right moving on now to isaac Crut bringing bravo star of the show and like every you know pie chart we've seen regarding any statistics alluding to pro quest meta well he has had the fattest piece of every pie we've seen he is a hungry fellow and uh, bravo star of the show has been really just chewing up the meta in in droves a lot of people just immediately the uh running to this hero because the power level on it is quite intense so why don't you walk us through isaac's bravo list 
Sure, not a problem. Uh, first off, when I'm looking at this list, we see kind of the standard equipment setup here. We have uh, one outlier here, which is the Arcane Lantern. Uh, typically, that's going to be the Stalagmite of uh, Bastion of Eisenloft. Uh, but we have the Rampart here, we have the Crown of Seeds, we have Crater Fist, we have Findle Spring Tunic, Ironhide Legs, Null Rune Boots. The Null Rune Gloves is another one that is kind of hit or miss. And then the new evolution, because of the increase of the 27 Aura Prism deck, uh, we are seeing Time Skippers. And the weapon of choice is the Winter's Whale. When we get into the actual deck as we're breaking it down, we see a lot of the usual suspects. The three Crippling Crushes, the three... Oak and Olds, three Spinal Crushes, one Pulverize, and then we're seeing three of the Pulses, one of each. The Art of War, some lists are running it, some aren't. I personally like it in the list because it's a little bit more filtration. It's an instant you can play on your opponent's turn, and it can also buff some attacks uh, as well as some defense buffs, which might be needed. One interesting note, there is a very unique breakdown in this list. Uh, I went through and added it up. There are 16 Earth cards, 16 Lightning cards, and 18 Ice cards. And there are no defense reactions in this list whatsoever. So this list is geared 100% for that full aggro tempo build. Uh, a lot of times right now we're seeing cards like the Red Unmovable, Sink Below's because it helps filter hands for the mirror matches or for some decks that you have to really block out. And we've also started to see some other defense reactions come in. And then there's the spicy one of tech, which is exposed to the elements. Now, that may be very key in this matchup we're getting ready to watch because you can actually get rid of Skeletta with a double fused exposed to the elements before the Runeblood player has a chance to actually pop off if they're trying to set up an OTK. So that may be something to look for as we go through it. Uh, but yeah, I can't wait to see the match. And this deck, again, has been performing ex exceptionally well. Typically, you're going to see about 15 of each of the elements in every matchup. That's just going to give you about a 50% chance when you activate Crown of Seeds in order to be able to trigger Bravo's ability with it. And we're probably going to see the hand disruption stuff come in. And Spinal Crush, uh, being on the receiving end of it, is very backbreaking. Uh, pun intended for the rune blood player. So yeah, it's gonna that was be my take on it. Uphill battle for uh, for Viserai. Oftentimes here he's gonna get smashed to pieces, and we're gonna be witnessing here Isaac Crew just hunting for those three key pulses because that is gonna really facilitate a lot of the damage. So let's move on to the game, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Pro Quest Final at Harry Tarantula. Isaac Crew versus Derek Chu. All right, so the players are shuffling up, and just so we know, in top eight, there's a special, I wouldn't call it a special rule, there's no rolling for who goes first or second. In this case, uh, it is decided by whoever is the top seed. Isaac Krut was the number one seed, and uh, just like that, he's also at the final table. Hey, uh, hey, Rick, guess who was the number two seed at this tournament? Oh, um, I, I, I don't know. Uh, you? It Well, and, and I know that your first thought here is the fact okay second place that's got to be tan and grace right but no it right. was it was me yeah i was second seed and i got absolutely my i got my body rocked uh, by raymond chow in the quarterfinals here now we do apologize here because there's going to be a little bit of glare on the equipment for isaac Krutz's starvo player but in reality here i mean we all know what's uh, what's up there so uh yeah. let's uh, let's have a good time here friends as both players are ready to rock and roll and it's uh, off to the races here isaac Krutz on Starvo versus Derek Chu on Viserai. Yeah, and, and in case anybody doesn't know and you want to look it up, he's got Crater Fist, he's got Crown of Seeds, Null Rune Boots, and uh, Findel Spring Tunic, which there's a counter on. We see a pitch straight into a channel like Frigid here. That is good to kind of slow down Viserai if he's going on the OTK plan uh, for the first turn, and it looks like we're just going straight to the Arsenal not allowing the Viserai player a chance to filter his hand is absolutely the correct play. And let's see if that channel like Frigid really comes into play in this. Yeah, it's a taxing play. Every play is going to cost you a little bit of extra juice here. And you're right, not giving the opponent an opportunity here 
to filter the hand off of just a cheeky attack. You could do it, but at this rate, it's not worth it. Just let your opponent be stuck in that uh, metal. So we already have an activation of Grasp of Arknight creating a rune chant, and just like that, look at this. We're already at four rune chants, and it's 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 just one of these situations where the I feel like the 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 Viserai player with the channel like Frigid is kind of tied up here, but that doesn't mean that your turn is a complete waste. No, you're not. It's not a complete waste. And the thing I really like about this is set up early with the rune chance. Uh, now that's typically going to signal that you're going for the OTK plan, which in my opinion is the correct plan to start with. And you don't have to build up the traditional 20 to 30 rune chance. This is going to be hurtful though. We have a crippling crush coming in and being on the receiving end of those, you're either going to take a chunk of damage and lose two cards. Uh, if you're still trying to set up the damage, your life points are a resource that you can use but you don't want to take too much too early there was no starvo activation on this so you can block as much as you want uh, but you're really just going to pass turn yeah this is basically saying all right my friend uh, you're giving me all your cards or none of your cards you're either taking it fat to the face and uh, i'm taxing you two out of the hand or you're just going to have to wait your turn one more time. It's it's very much uh, these kind of oppressive plays that make Starvo so powerful. The fact that you're coming in with Crippling Crush times three, Oak and Old times three, and if you're keeping track here, you know that Derek Chu is just basically going to be taking stock here of what these cards are and how frequently they're coming out, as we see now, just taking two cheeky damage, and, and but it's starting. It's not necessarily the damage that you're forcing here from Isaac's side. It's also the fact that you're buying cards out of the hand. Now, they did avoid the the crush effect crush being um you know if you take four or more damage off that the crush effect is in play in this case just taking two means that he can keep a card and maybe continue to do a little bit of work here but uh as it starts isaac still hasn't had the right recipe for that starvo activation well and the other thing is is notice that the channel lake frigid is gone so it you had to read the runes uh, you would the you'd be able to still make some rune chance, but unfortunately, one card in hand, having to pass the turn back, you really took that turn off, but you did mitigate the damage quite well. Uh, here we go into a Starvo activation. We see an Earth card and the Pulse. The Pulse looks like it's being played, and we're coming into a Mulch fused. Uh, so that is going to gain go again dominate plus two. So it's going to be coming in for nine, but because the pulse was played, it's getting plus four as well. So you're seeing this coming in for 13, dominate, go again, on hit. Your next turn's attack is going to be minus two damage. Uh, the pressure is just coming. These first two turns is absolutely amazing. It's hard for the rune blood player to efficiently block this. And this is where a lot of people are going to go to, well, maybe I should throw some equipment in front of it. You really shouldn't use your equipment in this matchup until you're ready to go off and you're trying to protect your life total. And there's, so, a lot of, there's a lot of equipment here for the Runebow player as well. I mean, Arcanite Skullcap, Grasp, Sk Skeletta, uh, that's a lot of soak that you can have. That's Those are some significant sponges that can really just, uh, you know, eat it when necessary. But in this case, Mulch, I don't think, is the right card to maybe donate some of this the on hit effect of mulch is not the biggest deal i feel uh especially when a lot of the damage is going to come through the rune blade uh, the, sorry the rune chant avenue uh i think that it's going to be a situation where you're going to see these equipments come in to block those oak and olds and block those uh those crippling crushes when they really are a devastating uh a, a devastating effect right now what you're seeing here is the setup that you want uh you see a mordred tied into a yellow read the runes that is going to create two off Viscerize ability. Then you're going to create three off of the uh, Read the Runes, getting up to nine Rune Chants. Uh, we have another activation of Starvo here. Starvo is being able to activate back-to-back -back turns. Uh, and we are seeing a break ground come in. A red break ground is going to be my guess. It's kind of hard to see the pitch. I'm going to guess that's a red break ground, which is going to mean that it's coming in for nine dominate go again. We do know that the Frost is in the hand to send over that cheeky Frost, but this is just pure damage right here. There's no on-hit effect of this that's going to really matter, so depending on what's in the hand, you're probably going to see a three block come down, uh, take six, and then try to either uh, take the four with the Frostbite or block it out if there's something important to play. I think we're still too early to see the fireworks uh, from Viscerai. I think Viscerai really wants to get up to about 12 to 20. So, yeah. all right, we, we do see the sink below come down, uh, and it looks like the option to sink was used. 
not much information in terms of what's in the hand here, but we are going to go ahead, and there's another uh, helping out there with a little bit of the damage. I mean, the sink below, and like you mentioned, the Starvo effect is most... <laughs> you know, dangerous when it's used with those on-hit effects, like the Okanold, like the Crippling Crush. And in this case, it's just pure vanilla damage the old-fashioned way, but it's still devastating given the fact that you could only block with one card from hand. So though you're not penalizing your opponent for taking that damage, sometimes just being able to take down the life counter is enough. Now, there was a Lightning Surge from Arsenal gaining go again, a pitch of the Frost Fang as well, like you mentioned, the cheeky Frost damage. So how about that? Starvo pulling off three consecutive attacks with a hand of four. Like, that is... That is a nasty, nasty bit, and this is part of the discussion about the power level of Starvo. But again, you don't have that if you don't have the right fuse. And now looking at the hand, I believe I see a Channel Lake Frigid. There's an Art of War in there, uh, another Lightning. So I think he's just an Earth card away from another Starvo effect. The question is, is do you have the right you know, the right recipe. Uh, you, you got the recipe, but you're not sprinkling any spice on any real meat there because you're not swinging with anything big. Right. Well, also keep in mind that Viserai now is sitting FC pop off the uh, Skeletta with the Sonata combo at 10 to 12 and still be able to steal the tempo away from Starvo, which is what they're looking to do with the more aggressive red package that's in their deck. I don't think we're going to see it this early, obviously. Uh, we do see the Art of War. It looks like the turn is being passed and decisions are being made. We see a crown of uh, seeds being activated, card going to the bottom, card drawn. There's the Earth card. We definitely have the activation. We still have two pitch floating, and that means we may see the Art of War. But if here's the gamble. If you use the Art of War to banish to draw to, you may not hit what you need. So I think that Art of War is is safe in the hands right now. And that's another beautiful part about the Crown of Seeds is the fact that you're recycling cards where necessary, drawing into that Starvo effect. Because that Starvo effect didn't exist until Crown of Seeds was activated. That, uh, that uh, you know, the Autumn's Touch there, sorry, the... Uh, uh, I believe that's Autumn's Touch, if I'm not that, mistaken. That, yeah, that, that is Autumn's Touch. Yeah, and that it looks like a red Autumn's Touch. For, it normally comes in for 7 plus 2, Dominate Gogan means it's coming in for 9 dominate go again and that didn't exist in the hand at the start of this turn so ultimately the fact that the crowd of seeds kind of allowed you to continue to cycle here and more and giving up a, a swarming gloom veil here that is an expensive piece that's a very very you know powerful card a free card that can give go again get you know get up to that break point of four and just like that there goes the channel lake frigid i think isaac here is smelling blood in the water a channel lake frigid like you mentioned a very huge disruption effect but at this point, why not just continue to, to pressure? The on-hit effect is uh, a frostbite. That could kind of slow you down. But not only that, you're at a point where you've already done 50% of the journey. And it's time to continue onward. Let's keep marching. Swing that Winter's Whale. We're going to block. And, uh, it, and ultimately, you're going to see here the fact that it, it, it's a situation where those rune chants are just collecting dust. And Isaac is in the driver's seat here. He has been fusing over and over and over. There's the Okanold. I see a blink. Uh, or do we have the ice card to continue the package? Nope. No, you don't have the ice card. You have two. It looks like uh, two Okanolds in hand, a blink, and a break ground. Uh, we see a become the Arc Knight with a discard. This may be going to get Sonata... And if it is, yeah, here we go. We're going to see, I'm I'm going to guess you're going to see the Skeleta get popped here. The uh, Sonata is going to come in for five plus three. So you're going to see eight cards off of it. Um, maybe not. Maybe this is just make rune chance because they didn't block with the Skeleta last turn. Um, I, I, it's hard to tell. Uh, we'll have to wait to see what the players do here. Yeah, that's nope, part of the... Just an arsenal. Just an arsenal. That's part of the the timing effect of the Skeletor, right? Is the fact that you right. want to break it, but you also want to get value of the two block. And typically, if you're not using that Skeleta, it's because you're not ready to pop it. And in this case, if that's the... If Derek is looking to use the Skeletor, then there's two points of damage that he could have absorbed before using it. So we'll see what the play is here. Perhaps he's just hanging on to the uh, Sonata in this case, maybe, you know, wanting to just squeeze out the value where it is. And in this game, I know that I've been in so many of these uh, situations where, you know, one one health saved here or there is the difference. And we'll okay. see how it goes. That's interesting right there. So the end of turn where you see an Art of War coming in and they're pitching the uh, Okanold for the draw two. However, we do see that the ice card was hit. There is another Okanold in hand. So about to see a dominate 
Starvo activation, dominate Oak and Old Turn, I believe. Or did he go? No, they went to their turn. Wow. This wasn't done at the end of the turn. This was actually done main phase for the uh, counter on the tunic to make it free. And I'm guessing we're seeing a plus damage. Unfortunately, we can't tell until we start seeing damage being uh, done. I believe it was go again, if I'm not mistaken. I think that that was the the case. Uh, I was okay. there, so I believe it's a go again. But it's still, I okay. mean, it's still an oak and old coming in here. You didn't get the Starvo activation, but, but you it's did, still fused. It's still exactly. It is still an absolute tank. So that is the first, you know, little wave of bad news here. As your Derek Chu looking down at your health total, saying, "I am halfway." To, to, to losing this game, how do I absorb this Okanold with a go again on top of it? Well, if, if Derek is ready to pop off, we might see a block using the grasp, the Skeletta, and the uh, all the equipment. There we go. And that means next turn he is going to be uh, the Skeletta. That's a full block for nine with go again coming in with the winner's whale for four. I think you just take this, uh, depending on what you have in your hand, and you pay for the frostbite. Yep. So you're taking four, getting the frostbite token. And uh, I, I'm going to assume that we're about to see that Skeleta get popped. We know that the Arsenal is the Sonata. And we know that uh, Bravo is now down two Okanolds because now, of that banish. Now hear me out, Rick. What if Okanold had Spectra and that block just popped it? How amazing would that be? That's a balance option right there. You'd play the birthday cake to Okanold and say thank you very much. Adios. Unfortunately, that's not the case. That ain't happening no. anytime soon, but that would have been a nice clean answer. Uh, but in this case, there's a frostbite token, so you're gonna have to pay that tax. Just the you know, that little cost of entry to play the turn is a frostbite token. And look at the score. 40 to 16. Derek, though. Poised, confident. You got eleven rune blades in the chamber there. Or sorry, rune chance in the chamber, ready to fire off here. But that's not how this is going to go. Now we, like you mentioned, you saw the skeleton block. You saw all the equipment come through. So this could be the big one. No, well, no. It looks like we're seeing a rune blood incantation, which will make another rune chant next turn. We've paid for it. Now we may see uh, uh, the sonata. Or nope, just a passing of turn. And an activation into oh what my. is going to be a crippling crush. It's a crippling crush oh. with the Starvo activation. Plus two, dominate, go again. Now, all the pitch is pretty much gone here. So the go again is going to be, you know, less than stellar. Ultimately, though, that is not what the story is. It ain't about the end credits. It's about the main movie. And that is one hell of a horror film. It is crippling crush yep. with the Starvo activation that could really pump the brakes on what Derek is looking to do here. It's just like the, it, it's basically it's Michael Jackson in the 80s. The hits just keep on coming and they keep on coming. And Derek is just in such a tough spot here. Uh, this is this is a, a gut wrenching spot because I'm going to guess that Derek was debating on whether or not to pop the Sonata and the Skeleta last turn. Where if you had applied enough pressure, maybe you could have prevented this. Or if you didn't apply enough pressure, this was inevitable. But now you can only block with one card. You can get two block out of your equipment because you can't block with the Skeleta. If you do, you can't use it. You might get a three block if you waste your boots. But you're only able to block five. You're going to lose two cards out of your hand. So you're stopping five of that 13, meaning you're taking eight damage. Your life total is so low, you're forced now to go off. The good news is that you're going to get the rune chant off the rune uh, blood incantation. So you're going to be able to get it for six. Uh, but we also have another Okanold attack coming in because that's got go again. And as long as the card in hand is frost or nope, we're just passing good. Because that frostbite would have been devastating if the frost card was still in hand, but wouldn't have had an arsenal to activate crown. Uh, and I, I mean, Isaac has to know what's coming. Oh, and he we're, just we're, drew another crippling crush. I mean, the, it, it, the writing's on the wall here. This is, has to be the opening at a certain point where, you know, uh, there's the Skeleta. So that is basically, that's the early warning system here for, right. for Isaac, saying that this is going to be a nasty offensive that's going to come through. But holding on to that crippling crush with, what do we see here? I see a lightning. I see an earth. I'm not sure if there's an ice card still in there to get the uh, last second f um, fusion for Isaac. But uh, well, I, I, I see the pulse. So he's got the pulse. The pulse is the yellow pulse, which is earth and lightning. Uh, so we're going to see nine cards off this Sonata average. We're 
hopefully going to see four cards go to hand. There's three. Wow. There's four. Yep, four cards going to hand on that five-card hand size. And we did get the ninth blade, but we don't have a way to really give it go again, depending on what the card in the hand is. Um, so hopefully there is a non-attack action that has go again that can be played off the boots to get go again. Uh, we have the ninth blade. We have a red spell blade assault, a blue spell blade assault, and the, the blue shrill of skull form. Uh, this could be some significant damage coming in. Also for arcane damage, finally, the first four points of damage done to Bravo Star of the Shrill. This game, and if Bravo can just take all this damage and lose no cards out of hand, unfortunately, it looks like it may be uh, game over because of that crippling crush potentially yeah it's nasty oh. now here comes some other fireworks as we mentioned the viscerai ability is just going to continue to stack some of these rune chants here here they come this is the first offensive and the first you know breaking of the ice off of the sonata the four arcane damage that just trickled through there 36 for isaac but here comes the the rest of the story as it were 13 rune chants with that ninth blade so that is a Big, big swing here, but the beauty is that Isaac has so much cushion here that he could just take this off the chin and just say, "Yeah, keep going, keep singing, baby," because I have, I, you know, I get the, I get the finale here. Well, the ninth blade does have go again because he did play a Marvin Skies after that's not our. It's a blue Marvin Sky, which means if the ninth blade hits, it's going to create an additional rune chant as well. So you have nine physical damage coming in, threatening an additional rune chant that has go again. You have thirteen arcane damage coming in. Um, you know, that that's still something that Isaac can take. And there's another attack to come. Now, the other attack to come is going to either be a red spell blade. Uh, see, there's red spell blade, blue spell blade, and the blue uh, uh, shrill of skull form. So there's not going to be a way to give that one go again. But you can apply a lot of damage uh, and set up for the next turn, I believe. So we do see the crown being activated, I believe. Nope, that was a pitch for Nolrun. The crown has not been activated. And we see a three-card block blocking all nine damage. And then it looks like the ten damage came through on the rune chance. This this might be a situation here where Isaac is just saying, you know what, um... I don't know what the rest of the story is going to look like. Let's just block out the damage where I can. I don't necessarily have uh, a guaranteed Starvo activation to close this one out. So uh, I'll just take the damage from the rune chance. It's going to take you a lot of effort to rebuild that arsenal of rune chance. And uh, ultimately, I'm, I'm okay taking a turn off. I'm okay blocking a little bit here. If this is the entire show, like you mentioned, the fireworks, if this right. is the whole display... I'm okay. I'll put my shades on and I just won't look directly into the sun and then we'll come back tomorrow and see what's up. And that's the deal here is Starvo has really just been in the driver's seat from the, the get-go here. But look at that life total. It's now 20 to 8, a far cry of that 40 to 8 massive chasm between the two life totals. And uh, Isaac still is uh, lots of, of, you know, there's lots of... Um, of, of you know, fireworks of his own, as there's two crippling crushes in the discard, an oak and old has been played, as well as one banished, so there's still some uh, punches left to be had. Well, and there was a discard done, so we're up to four rune chains right now. Uh, so, something interesting with the new lines that Viscera has available, with so many reds in the deck, we could see a very aggressive line coming in. We've got a Sonata coming in, this time for four, it's coming in at X equals one, and it's going to look at four cards. We have a full grip because it was just passed back. So at this point in time, we've generated a rune chant. We've played an unattack action. There are cards like Swarming Gloomvale that can start applying a lot of pressure really quickly. We do see a Crown of Seeds activation. Question is, is does that help out that that final turn? The Crown of Seeds has been done. The Arsenal card is put uh, to the bottom. We draw a card and prevent the next damage coming through. No problem. But uh, you got to wonder here, does – now that Viserai has the momentum, now that he's got all of that tempo – can you continue onward? How careful does Isaac have to be here to just eat damage and uh, to, to preserve a hand that could potentially gain back that momentum? Is 20, with the current board state, a safe life total to lean on? Or do you think that Isaac has to be somewhat 
you know, vigilant about the fact that 20 is completely within the realm of possibility. Well, 20 is completely within the realm of possibility of this ride. That's going to be the car that's going to a lot of heavy there, Swarming Glendale. That's going to make another rune champ because you played the non-attack action. That's coming in for four uh, with go again because that's the second rune champ that was made this turn thanks to the rune blood incantation. So you got four rune champs coming in at first. We've already soaked the one arcane damage uh, with the crown of seed activation off the Sonata. So you've got four and four coming in. You have another rune champ backed up. You have one float. And you have two cards in hand. One of them is going to be the Spellblade Assault, I believe, unless it was the blue that was just pitched. I couldn't tell what color the pitch was on the Spellblade Assault that the Sonata got. If we have a way to activate Creepers with a go again, if needed, you could see another attack plus a Rosetta, which would generate even more arcane damage. So really, I've seen Viserai, especially the Tempo Slant, be able to put out 20 plus damage a turn. So this is something that, uh, Isaac has to be careful of. It feels like in this matchup here, you've got that rampart of the ram said, but it's literally just been it's been furniture at this point. Something that you know Starvo can lean on as he's swinging back at you uh, hasn't really come into play at all. Uh, perhaps you know arcane lantern could have been an, an opportunity here as well to prevent some of that arcane damage, especially when you do have. Uh, that Rosetta, but I think he's just basically got it all settled up here. Uh, the fact that your crown can basically block one of the Rosetta Arcane, whereas your boots can block the other. So you're, you're, all your bases are, are generally covered here, but you do need a card in Arsenal to activate crown. You do need cards to pitch to do so. And suddenly, that 32-point deficit has been reduced to merely 9. So it is a closer game than, uh, you know, if you got up to go get a drink or go to the bathroom, you come back, you wonder what the hell just happened. In reality, there's the first uh, activation of Rampart of the Ram's Head. Paying, coming in, blocking 1. And I think there's a situation here where perhaps Isaac oh. is just looking at it, and oh my goodness, there goes another one. All right, so we're seeing the boots activated. Here goes the go again, but the, the attack already had go again. So we're fishing for another attack, and uh, I believe that was a whiff. There were three attack action cards with no non-attack. And it would have been nice to get that other Swarming Gloom Veil that was there, but unfortunately that was not the case. Uh, we do see that there are Rune Chants galore. There's two more Rune Chants. We have another card coming in. Uh, it's going to be pitched for the Rosetta. The Rosetta is going to come in for two, two, and two. Two Rune Chants, two Arcane, and two Physical. And right now, the Bravo has been able to hold on to their hand. We see it. We're down to an 8 to 10. But I believe we have the Starvo activation with the Dominate attack in hand uh, for the Bravo. We're seeing a block of the two uh, physical damage on the gloves uh, at this point in time. The tunic is up. And we are seeing the Starvo activation being indicated. Oh, uh, yeah. That that little there slide forward saying, all right, my turn as we reveal Lightning, Earth, and Winter. Nice little uh, ice card as well. And, oh, there's another Mulch. Now, this is not one of those cards like you mentioned. Those are not one of those devastating on-hit effects. It does have an on-hit effect, but it's not really the end game here that you're looking for. It's not a Crippling Crush. It's not an Oak and Old that really could pulverize and absolutely devastate your opponent. But at a life total of eight, a dominated effect like that can really, really put you in a bad spot. Well, yeah, and you're, you're sitting there with no armor that can block you one block off you can only block three to four depending on what's in your hand uh with it whether you have a defense reaction in your hand or not out of your hand so you're also getting go again so this is coming in for nine dominate go again on hit your next attack is minus two now that we're past the otk side of things weakening the attacks that viscerai can do is punishing because it is going to stop the amount of damage he can crack back with as well so we see the sink below, the sink option. We're taking five. We're going to three. That's We're down to, nope, should be three. Uh, Did I miss something? Mulch is, he was at eight. Mulch is seven, plus two is nine. Might have been a miscue here. Maybe with something that we perhaps missed uh, an additional here ultimately there. Uh, 
I mean, two, three, you're, you're close to the edge there. You got to walk lightly as uh, we're continuing to block here some of these cards. There goes these creepers as well as the three block. That blocks everything. You're staying there again. You're so close to the edge here, Rick. It is difficult. Mm -hmm. And one more Starvo activation feels like it's lights out. So Isaac Crew here potentially drawing up to a winning hand. And that is, I see, uh, that is an Art of War in hand. I believe a, uh, there's an ice card in there. I'm trying to catch a glimpse of the other elements here well there was a pulse in the hand with an art of war and i believe that that would be the ice pulse um so it's i'm going to assume that is the um uh, uh ice and earth and uh, if that was a flash in the hand that i saw then we have the innovation we also have a, a card in arsenal to activate with the crown uh, so here comes to become the Arc Knight. We're going to see a discard of an attack action card, which means we're going to get a non-attack card. Oh no, we're setting up. We're setting up the rune chance. It's the best we could do. We get four rune chance off that play. Sitting at five rune chance with no go again, no armor to block with, and I believe we're going to see maybe. Nope, we're going into the turn, and they do have the activation. Here it comes, so. and this is a very scary thing. You slide that Starvo up close and say, all right. And when you're at that point of two you know, two health left, an Evergreen, yep. Starvo, Dominate, that is one hell of a nasty recipe as we just take a look over here as I think they're just doing some last-minute calculations. I don't think it's they've got it. As you can see here, they're already saying, all right, this is your prize. I don't think you could get past this massive one. That is the end of the game. I think that was it. Uh, wonderful, wonderfully done by Isaac Krutz. So there you have it. Isaac Kroot is your ProQuest winner at Harry Tarantula. Uh, a wonderful, a murderer's row uh, of of players and me, I'll say, uh, there. But Isaac Kroot did stand tall with Starvo defeating the Rune Blade, the wonderful Viscerai list there brought by Derek Chu. And I'm telling you, Rick, I mean, there was a situation or a point in that game where it was 40 to 8. And it seemed like Isaac could do no wrong. Ultimately, it became a 10 to 2 score and a lot closer than I think it was going to be. Right. Well, Isaac really uh, hit the ground running by applying the pressure and keeping the tempo. We had uh, the Okanold, we had Crippling Crushes, we had all the big attacks early on. So the life total did get low for Derek. And when Derek did have his go turn, where he popped off at eight life, like you pointed out, he was able to take control. But really, he took the control because I feel like Isaac let him take it. At any point in time, like we said during the match, he could have just taken a lot of that damage. Uh, especially on the go turn, he could have taken it all if he had a hand to crack back with. Uh, he didn't really feel like he had the hand to crack back with from the way he was blocking, based on what I could tell. Uh, so at that point in time, uh, really, it was just now filtering the hand until you got to a point where you could get the dominated attack. And then we saw the dominated attack dropping him to two. And then we saw the final dominated attack going in for lethal. Absolutely amazing. It is the power of Starvo. Uh, Viscerai putting on one heck of a fireworks show there. And honestly, it had that last Sonata hit and that swarming Gloomvale got to go to the hand. That could have been the difference in the game because that was that could have been more damage, forcing more cards out of the Bravo's uh, hand. Uh, but unfortunately, it did miss uh, hitting the non-attack action. Yeah, you know, we've talked about Isaac Jessen, you know, whiffing on the three of a kind and perhaps, you know, in the future of these very competitive tournaments, we might be talking about Sonata's whiffing and uh, costing people games and ultimately uh, a wonderful showing by both players. Congratulations to Isaac Crute for winning the Pro Quest at Harry Tarantula. And friends, if you want to get some cool swag, go to HarryT.com, use the code FLAKE5 and you'll get 5% off your first order and everything after that just put in the code flake if you like the show and we'll uh we'll we'll send you a thumbs up through space and time and another big thanks to uh bcw supplies for you know constantly supporting the show and the content here and to rick for being an awesome caster well done my friend that was awesome great insight and great delivery and hey, thank you so much for letting me be a part of this and letting me uh, share in this experience. It's honestly been a lifelong dream of mine to get involved in casting and being able to do this and now getting to do it for the first time. You know, I really feel like an Eminem song. My my hands are sweaty. There's vomit on my shirt already. So, uh, but no, thank you so much. And I will be using your code just so you know, because uh, Harry Tarantula just uh, put up a picture of their new t-shirt uh, for their anniversary. 
and uh, I'm going to be the proud owner of one of those Harry Tarantula anniversary shirts. So I'll make sure to use Flake 5 with that. You got it. Well, don't forget, friends, you're not losing if you're learning. Keep playing the game. You might win. We'll see you next time on Instant Speed.